Hey everyone, we've got a really exciting video today for you about our latest NX plugin for Playwright. Now this is extra special for me because I love Playwright and now NX has first class support for Playwright right out of the box. So in this video, we're going to show you how you can use Playwright to enhance your projects as well as how you can now easily set everything up using the new NX plugin. And be sure to watch to the end of the video because we're going to include full stack end-to-end -end tests as well as even multiplayer tests. So let's get right into it. All right, so here's an app that I'm working on. We can see we're building a tic-tac-toe game here. We can see the idea is users are kind of going to trade off turns so x will go first and then o will go and if x ever gets three in a row the game will say that the game's over and x wins same thing if we do the same with o game over and o wins but here's the issue i'm having right now with this app if i actually have a game that goes to a tie I actually have a bug here where it's saying it's O's turn when really it should say game over, it's a tie. So we're going to use Playwright as a way of isolating this case, fixing the bug and making sure we don't break it in the future. And this all starts by adding Playwright to our project. So let's come over to VS Code where I have my NX repository here. If we take a look inside of my package.json file and look at the dev dependencies, we can take a look at all of the NX plugins that we have installed currently. And we notice that the NX Playwright plugin hasn't been added yet. So that's where we're gonna start. We're going to open up a terminal here and we're going to run the command and npm add dash d at nx slash playwright. Once this is done, we can take a look at our package JSON and we can see there's the new nx playwright plugin. So now the plugin is installed. So now that the plugin has been installed, we're going to go to the nx console and we're going to run a generate for our playwright configuration. This is going to add playwright configuration to our existing project, which is actually what I want in this case. So we're going to say the project we're going to add this to is our single player app. And now we're going to also add some extra options here by scrolling down, we can see we can give a web server address. So here I'm using localhost 3000. And for the web server command, we're actually going to use the NXCLI inside of this option to start our single player app in watch mode. So I'll enter NX serve single player. And to match our given web server address, I'm going to give it the dash dash port option equals 3000. With all that set, I'll hit generate. And NX is going to handle updating all of our repo for us to make this work. Once it's done, we can take a look at our source control tab to see what all happened. We can see in addition to having previously added the NX Playwright plugin for us, we're also adding the Playwright dependency itself as well as the ESLint plugin for Playwright. Looking at our ESLint, we can also see that this set up configuration for us inside of ESLint and generated a Playwright config file here that's going to use the information we gave it in order to set up our web server for us. Next up, it touched our project JSON file to add an ETE target. This is again using the Playwright plugin in order to run this task and parameterize it. And last but not least, it gave us a little example test here that we can run. So I'm going to take the example test that they gave us and adjust it ever so slightly so it matches our app. So give it the name tic-tac-toe. And now we can run our tests using the NX CLI by running the command NX ETE and then the name of our app, which in this project is single player. So I'll enter NX ETE single player, hit enter, and there we go. NX was able to test our app for us and show us that everything passed. Now notice that because I have the Playwright VS Code plugin installed, I actually have this green triangle right here that if I click, it's actually going to run just this specific test. And because of the way I have the plugin configured, it's actually going to open up this Chromium browser showing the end state of the test when it's done. This is actually super helpful in terms of scripting out some sequence of user actions that are going to occur inside of your app. And then seeing how your app actually handled all of those actions. Because we're using that Playwright extension as well, we can also click on the testing tab. And this is actually going to give us a list of all of the tests that we have inside of our test suite right now. So just to recap setting up Playwright, we installed the NX plugin, we ran the generator, and from there, everything worked. All the config was set up for us, including ESLint config. So we have linting set up for our Playwright spec files. And when we ran things, either using the NX CLI or via the Playwright VX code extension, things just worked. This is super powerful for me because I don't have to look up the Playwright documentation again to see how to set up Playwright specifically. I can just run the generator and NX handles everything from there. So let's take the starting point and next I'm going to add in an actual test suite that's actually going to test our tic-tac-toe app and highlight that issue that we were seeing earlier where if it's a tie game, we're not actually displaying it correctly. So with the magic of editing, I've got what is now a pretty comprehensive test suite that's going to test out all the pieces of our app. If I want to, I can come in into our testing tab. We can run all of these tests right now. As we can see, our tests are mainly passing except for the cats game or the tie game that we were looking at initially. So just looking at what this test looked like, we can see we can write pretty clean code here. We're going to start most of these by going to the root of our app, and then we're going to make some assertions. So for starting with an empty board, we're asserting that the board matches 
this empty board right here. We're also making some assertions over whose turn it is. So this first test is pretty simple, but looking at our second test, we can see we're starting to script out some interactivity. So we can see we're clicking a space and then asserting the board matches the new updated board. And looking at this test case where X wins, we can see we're actually scripting through an entire game, making sure that the board matches where it should be after all these clicks are done, and then making sure that the turn matches what we should expect, which is the game is over and X wins. We're doing the same here with the Cats game. We're actually going through and scripting out all nine clicks that need to happen in the correct order. And this is the board that we should see. And we actually are passing this assertion. However, we're failing this assertion, which is kind of what we expect. We can see here, if I click on this X button, Playwright's actually going to run this one test in isolation, and it's going to open up this Chromium browser when it's done, just showing us the state that the game ended up in. So we can see, it should say it's game over, it's a tie game, but it's still saying, oh, it's turn. So this is actually what we want. We've isolated the scenario that things are failing, and we're giving us a red X to let us know that something's broken here. So I'm going to come into some of my actual logic now. I'm going to fix this by creating a new function here to determine if the board is full. So let's code that up real quick. Cool, so I have a function here that's going to tell us if our board is full. Next, we're going to come up into our logic and we're going to use this here. So if the board is full, we're going to return the board and here for the turn, we'll say game over, it's a tie. I'm gonna copy this and we're going to put it inside of O's turn two. All right, so as soon as I save that, I can come back to my spec file and let's rerun that and see if it passes now. Boom, and now we can see the test pass. If we come over to our Chromium browser too, we can see, hey, there it is. Game over, it's a tie, exactly like we expected. So that's a great way of seeing how Playwright can help you for a single application. But this is NX, we do mono repos and we love co-locating projects together. So next I'm gonna take some of the same code we used to create the single player game and we're going to create a multiplayer game. So this is going to involve a new front end application called multiplayer and then we'll also need a server. And the server is going to act as a central point for our clients to connect to. We're going to use some socket connections so that we can have two players connected at the same time to one game and each player should be able to see the other one moving when it's their turn. I'm gonna go ahead and try to code this up real quick. We're gonna lead on that magic of editing again. So I'll see you in a little bit. All right, I'm back and I think we've got this working. Uh, we can see on the left hand side, this is our player X and we can see as soon as they click it, player O gets the update. So I can click over here for player O and coming back to player X now, we can click here. Now let's just make sure if I click around, player X can't actually steal player O's turn. That looks good. So player O will move and then player X will win. So there we go. X wins, O loses. But again, I want to use Playwright here to enforce that this full stack system is working properly. And I want to be able to run this in an automated way so that when it comes time to set up our CI pipelines, we can automate the entire interaction that I just did here with my mouse manually, but do it programmatically and in a matter of seconds. And this will make sure that no matter what changes we put in, this interaction stays solid. So let's take a look at some of my source code here. I don't wanna make this video too long, so we're not going to scour through a lot of the logic and setting up the socket connections that I did, but I did wanna take a look at the general architecture. And since we're using NX, one of the best ways to do this is hit Command Shift P and start typing in graph, and we'll select the option to show the full NX project graph. So here's what we're working with. Originally, we just had our single player application and we can see the single player depended on our tic-tac-toe view library as well as our tic-tac-toe logic library. Now in our latest edition, we added this multiplayer application to the repo as well as this multiplayer server. We also have a project up top here that's our multiplayer end-to-end -end project. This is actually where our playwright tests are going to go for our full stack multiplayer system. Remember for our single player application, we actually just added an E2E target and nested all the playwright config and tests for the single player app inside of our single player project. That's perfectly acceptable because our single player project was isolated. However, for multiplayer, we really want to stand up a web server to serve our multiplayer front end application and then also stand up our multiplayer server. And we want our end-to-end -end app to be able to manage those things and then to run tests via Playwright through the browser that our players will be using so that we can make that interaction that I showed you originally happen. Now, again, I use NX generators to create all of these to create the multiplayer app. I just ran the NX generator for a React application. And when I selected this, I actually chose Playwright as my end-to-end -end test runner. And that's what created this multiplayer end-to-end -end project for us. To create the multiplayer server, I also ran a generator using our NX node plugin. So really a lot of this stuff was set up for us already 
already by NX. But let's take a look at some of the Playwright tests because this is where things can get really cool. So this is where we're looking at the end-to-end -end test. And notice that I'm using Playwright here to set up before each and after each hook in order to set up our server. We notice if we click into the server, we're actually taken into our multiplayer server application where I'm exporting a function called start server. We're just importing that start server here into our tests and then calling it and keeping a reference to the server so that after each test, we can close that server out. This way, we're essentially standing up a new server for each one of our individual tests. And if you're wondering why we didn't have to do this for the web server, this is actually because the Playwright config comes with that web server configuration all set up for us. Remember, we actually give Playwright the command to start up our web server, as well as the URL where we can find our application at. And Playwright is going to use this to manage our web server for us. So the only reason we have to do this for our socket server is because Playwright doesn't have support for that out of the box. But in any case, I ended up creating the same exact test suite that we had before. You'll notice each one of these tests is the exact same test that we had done for the single player app. However, now we can see that the first player that connects, we're going to call the X player, and the second that player that connects is we're going to call the O player. And this X player and O player are actually browsers that I can control any way I want. So we can see in this first test, we're asserting that both players have an empty board, but that the X player is being told that it's your turn, while the O player is being told that they're waiting on an opponent. Same thing for clicking works. We're gonna set up an X player and an O player. And then we're going to have the X player click on the top left space. And we're going to assert both the X player and the O player see the correct board. And now the X player says waiting on opponent while the O player says it's your turn. In this test, we go through the whole process of having the X player win while the O player should be told you lose. And then finally this cats game, which is where we started at the end of which both players should be told it's a tie game. Now, just like before, we can run any of these tests individually just by clicking on this button right here that the Playwright extension is putting in for us. Let's click it and see what happens. So it went by really, really quick. But as we can see here on the left-hand side is the X player and on the right-hand side is the O player. We can see they both have matching state and they're both saying tie game. So Playwright did its job. And taking a look because we were able to automate it with all the config that we had set up, Playwright was able to start a web server, start our socket server, and run through that entire interaction in five seconds. And now because we're using NX, if we want to run all of our ETE products, we can simply run the command NX run many dash dash target equals ETE. And as soon as we hit that, we'll see that we end up running our single player end to end test, which we had already run before. So this result was cached. And we're also going to run our multiplier ETE here. And remember this is standard ending up both our front end and our back end inside of it. So really all we have to do to have really good confidence over our system, including our multiplayer and our single player apps, all we have to do is run this one command and NX is going to manage all of that for us. So really hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out the description for a link to the GitHub repo in case you want to take a closer look at some of the socket code I wrote to make all this stuff work. You can also use it as a great reference for how to set up end-to-end -end tests for your full stack systems. Let us know in the comments if this was helpful. As always, we're working really hard here for y'all. We know y'all are working hard too. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.